Lulu White was one of the notorious madams of 1990s. She was a brothel madam, procuress and entrepreneur in New Orleans, Louisiana during the Storyville period. Lulu White was a real madam who trafficked in young women and girls for the purposes of prostitution. The success of Mahogany Hall made her one of the only black self-made millionaires at the beginning of the century. She was born in Selma, Alabama in 1868, but she liked to lie about her origins. She would claim to be from Jamaica sometimes. Other times, she would claim to be from Cuba. Her goal seemed to be to create an aura of exoticism about herself. And the reason to attract wealthy white men to herself and her girls who were her prostitutes. If they seemed like they were more than just prostitutes from New Orleans, but instead well-born, well-educated, and charming young women from exotic places. A higher price could be charged for their services. The first story in White's compendium was that of the tragic Octoroon. The word Octoroon describes a person who is seven parts white and one part black. She earned fame and fortune as the handsomest Octoroon in the South, and her bordello, Mahogany Hall, featured Octoroon prostitutes for the pleasure of wealthy white men during one of America's most virulently and violently racist periods. She started working as a sex worker and attracted a lot of wealthy and prominent clients. These clients helped her to expand her business and by the late 1880s, she had become a madam with her own house. Even though White was arrested several times during this period on charges including disorderly conduct, she was still able to succeed in her sex work business as she had the backing of politicians. Soon, White was able to build a $40,000 brothel at 235 Basin Street, which became known as Mahogany Hall. The four-story brothel was made of marble and it had 15 bedrooms, with each bedroom having its own bath and five parlors with the most expensive paintings and wall-to-wall -wall mirrors. Storyville guidebooks listed the houses and prostitutes of the district alongside advertisements for liquor, cigars, and dubious cures for sexually transmitted diseases. The most well-known guide published annually was the Blue Book, but other rivals existed such as the Red Book. Lulu White had several run-ins with the law in her time for a multitude of things, including attempted murder and selling alcohol. She made her fortune selling sex, and she came up with some very innovative ways to do her job. By the early 1890s, White was already madam of her own establishment. Storyville's shine couldn't last forever. Twenty years after the establishment of the district, mounting pressure both from segregationists and from those who wanted a full ban on prostitution were beginning to take a toll. In 1917, legislation was proposed to officially segregate Storyville. But while Storyville's madams won against Jim Crow, they couldn't fight the Navy. As the U.S. entered World War I, anything that might distract military men from their duty was considered a threat, and that included prostitution. A federal order prohibited prostitution within five miles of any military base, and with New Orleans's prominent Navy presence that spelled the end of Storyville. On November 6, 1918, White was arrested for violating the Draft Act which prohibited prostitution within 10 miles of a military facility. Her sentence was a year and a day in the penitentiary. After serving about three months, she applied for a pardon, citing poor health, and President Woodrow Wilson commuted her sentence. White returned to New Orleans and immediately started running her business again. She sold the building in 1929 and vanished from history after 1931. Jazz historian Al Rose believes that she died at the residence of former Madame Willie Piazza in 1931. But a teller at the National Bank of New Orleans reported that White made a withdrawal in 1941. Thus, her life after Storyville still remains a 